Alain Noir is a game filled with ambition. That ambition may or may not have succeeded in your opinion, but what Alain Noir tried was something unique. For this reason, Alain Noir has always remained a game I look back on with fond memories, but I haven't played the game since it released back in 2011, and I wanted to see how those memories hold up today, and well, here we are. Today I'll be having a look into Alain Noir's development, story and gameplay and seeing if it stands the test of time. So sit back and relax as we take a look back at LA Noir. The more I cover different games and their different development processes, the more I have come to realize a common problem. Idea versus reality. Trying to figure out what ideas are possible when looking at technology, time, budget and manpower to find a reality in an idea. In many ways, L.A. Noir was sort of lucky in this regard. Team Bondi originally started working on the game back in 2004 with just six people, but had full funding from Sony Australia. Then in 2006 is when Rockstar and 2K came into the picture and would then handle the game's publishing and give Team Bondi access to use their resources to increase the team's manpower, increase funding. Alain Noir ended up costing $50 million to make and another $50 million to market and increase the amount of time the team had to make the game. These resources lead to more ambitious ideas, which you can see when talking about the game's custom engine. All companies working with Rockstar have access to their advanced game engine, but Team Bondi had been researching a new technology in motion scanning, wanting to up the realism and in turn make what they were trying to create in a detective game that relies on facial cues. This meant working with a custom engine that involved doing scenes twice, once in a mocap studio and again in front of the motion scanners. These motion scanners record the actor's face from every angle at over a thousand frames a second, and it was a crucial technology for the game's interrogations. Unfortunately, the technology wasn't perfect as the motion scanner would just detect the facial movements and led to criticism about the character's lifeless bodies yet expressive faces. In my opinion though, this ambition into realism and police investigations was Team Bondi's most successful venture. The team also employed the same realism approach when developing the open world, using aerial photos and iconic buildings from the time to create LA in the 1940s. LA Noir was slated for a 2008 release and consistently was pushed back each year until it finally released in 2011. The game critically and commercially was a massive success, even increasing 2K shares day of release by 7.75%, which was a three year high for the company. However, after the game released, staff complaints began to spill out. Former Team Bondi staff launched a website dedicated to the 100 staff members who worked on the game but were cut prior to the game's release, and an anonymous team member reported the game's lengthy development time to the studio's high turnover rates, managerial style, and working hours and conditions when working on the game. The complaints mounted up so much that the International Game Developers Association launched an investigation into the studio due to the claims of constant 12-hour workdays and lengthy crunch time, which could easily be the case with the game having a new release date every year. To pile onto this, Team Bondi was in the hole owing employees past and present unpaid wages and bonuses, and the company was liquidated in October 2011. Well, I think this is easily the biggest mess of development I've seen, but let's jump into the actual game because somehow it's still managed to be incredible. Alain Noir takes place in 1947 Los Angeles, shortly after the end of World War II. We take control of Cole Phelps, a decorated veteran of the Pacific Campaign, who returns to LA to become a patrol officer for the LAPD. After we successfully solve a major murder case, we end up being promoted to detective, 
and from here rise through the ranks rather quickly going from traffic homicide to vice and along the way see the corruption the department has within with cases ending with a push from a captain to put away someone over someone else connections to mobsters and clear motives to get a particular result with a case this is especially apparent with our partner in vice roy as we are investigating the explosion of morphine surrette stolen from a military vessel Whilst we have experienced jaded partners who come to rush conclusions, Roy has a clear motive for pinning this morphine case on someone undeserved. Making our way through this desk, Cole ends up having an affair with German singer Elsa Lichtman, which Roy uses to derail the investigation as Cole was closing in on the truth that the department has its own investments into the morphine. Cole becomes disgraced publicly and demoted to arson, where the department believes he will no longer be a problem. Let me just point out my biggest issue here. This affair literally means nothing because we never see his wife or family life. We never make a connection. We barely hear him talk about them. So this affair and public disgrace sort of feels out of place, which is a shame because if we saw his family and how this would tear everything apart, then it would have mattered. Unfortunately for the corruption within the force, arson only proves to be a place to expose them further, along with the mayor, as they are all entwined in the Suburban Redevelopment Fund that makes housing estates for veterans, but cuts massive corners leading to faulty houses and people unwilling to sell property win vacations so when they're gone, they can burn their house down, which leads to people being murdered. As the investigation comes to a close, we learn the culprit for the fires is a man named Ira, a former flamethrower operator in Cole's unit who was traumatized due to Cole's orders. He ends up kidnapping Elsa and as Cole rescues her, he ends up dying. Yeah, the ending for the game is a little abrupt and really the story before you reach Vice is non-existent. You are literally just completing cases, some of which continue on from one another, but not often. The majority of the story happens through newspapers that show the morphine syndicate and the big plays involved, and the war flashbacks that show Cole's true character, and both contain some great story moments, but the problem with this way of storytelling is it's just jarring. You sort of forget what happened previously, and the World War II flashbacks happen after main cases. So with the DLC cases now incorporated into the main game, sometimes it can be a few cases before you find out more. Now as a personal wish list in terms of story, I would have loved choices related to the corruption within. Sort of like with Sleeping Dogs where you choose between the criminal or police side, but with corruption, taking bribes, getting goodies, and ways of enticing you over to the dark side. And leading to a different ending where instead of uncovering corruption, you could be the one trying to stop this info from getting out. Again, idea versus reality. I'm not sure how possible that would have been, but I think it would have encouraged multiple playthroughs more and given us more incentive to explore LA. Which leads me on to the gameplay. Whilst the story of LA Noir isn't the highlight of the experience, not bad, just a little underdone, the gameplay is where, in my opinion, the game shines, but can also be the source of love it or hate it, and I'll explain why. Going to crime scenes, visiting leads in a case, searching for clues, talking to your partner about theories, and then putting all that together to interview suspects or people of interest is truly engaging in my opinion. The problem for some is that's the game, because the open world is pretty empty, the gunplay is a little off, and the street crimes revolve around chasing or killing someone, so the cases are the core of the game. LA Noir's biggest problem is repetition. Even for myself, who I would say is a big fan of the game, but I could only play max three cases in a row before I needed to take a break. But for some, that break just lasted, well, forever. For these reasons, I understand why LA Noir isn't everyone's cup of tea. But as I said, I love this game, 
and it's because I find all the cases really interesting, especially once hearing that the majority of the cases were at least somewhat based on true events. Not all happened in the right time period, but still really intriguing. Beginning a new case and visiting a crime scene, talking to a coroner if relevant, looking around for obvious and subtle clues, knowing you found all the clues through music cues, and moving on to a person of interest to learn more. Someone is always hiding something, and even though the facial clues at times can almost look like the suspect is giving you the fuck me eyes, and overall can be ridiculous, they can also be subtle, even just slight movements in their body to give a feeling of unease. But the feeling of accusing someone of lying and knowing you've caught them in a lie is honestly like a drug. It feels so good. I think you're lying, Rasik. I think some of your men aren't fully licensed. You're desperate to cover your sales. And how are you going to prove that, detective? Name me one of my guys who would have overlooked a fault like this. What about Matthew Ryan? Uh, you know about Ryan, huh? These interrogations are filled with funny moments through the facial cues, but also with the good cop, bad cop, and accuse option. Yes, they changed the names of them and now have ruined the press X doubt memes. These options lead to some lines of dialogue that come completely out of the blue. You had a run-in with him? Mechanical. A presumptuous young man who did not know his place. He presumed to ask me questions. We do a lot of presuming here in the United States, Consul General. It comes with the turf. You fuck young boys, Valdez. Are you a madman? But these are always going to happen out of nowhere when you have one word prompts instead of choosing exactly what you say. But they do lead to a good laugh. My personal favorite desk was Homicide because it was the most intertwined from case to case. And the final encounter with a mass serial killer was creepy like it needed to be. But the DLC cases amongst each desk were true highlights, especially on the arson desk, where we investigate a bombing in LA. Driving around the explosion area, sorting through rubble, and then the case taking a turn into spies and military was enthralling. It was probably my favorite case of the game. As I said in the beginning though, the open world is a little lifeless. Driving around can be a pain with wonky AI, street crimes become very samey and for some reason will take you across the whole map, which is infuriating. And the gunfights just don't feel great to play, which will lead you to stop driving altogether and just focus on playing through the cases instead of doing side content because the difference in quality between the two is pretty far apart. I would have enjoyed mini cases as side content or helping a fellow detective with a case out of the norm, doing average policing jobs or more crimes willy nilly instead of scripted ones, but that's just me. The most important aspect though is I had fun replaying LA Noir. Flaws or not, I had a blast being part of the LAPD. I cannot say this enough. I loved my time playing through LA Noir. Despite lackluster mechanics and a story that can be hit and miss, the core gameplay loop revolving around solving cases is captivating. Looking for clues, learning about the victims and suspects, interrogating people, and figuring out how much truth are behind their words is all enthralling, intriguing, and really makes you engage your inner mind hunter. There still isn't a game like LA Noir, which is a shame, because I believe a game like it today could only be better with better technology and more ways to improve upon its flaws. But for a game that released almost nine years ago, to stand the test of time today is a true testament to its quality. And whilst it's not going to be a game for everyone, it is a game for me.